During Christmas, surrounded by family and friends, we feel the warmth of knowing we belong in this place with these people. Or we experience a jarring disappointment that can come when we feel we do not belong. This season is a time of opposites, highs and lows, joy and depression, rushing when we want to stand still. Within the Christmas story itself, we find opposites, angels, heaven's most glorious citizens visit with shepherds, Bethlehem's least, the God who chose to partner with an unwed mother and be born in a barn also chose shepherds, the outcast of the day, to be the first to hear the news that Emmanuel has come. The world has a habit of discarding what it do doesn't fit. Our God does the opposite. Isaiah 40, 11 says, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. In these final days leading up to Christmas, we see angels visiting the shepherds, and we remember that God cares for us as lambs. God loves us when we do not. God calls us to love everyone, no matter what. Shall we pray? Dear God, you are the light of the world. In you there is no darkness at all. There are no outcasts, no one who is not good enough. As we continue on our journey through Advent, help us to remember that those whom the world says do not belong, you welcome them with open arms. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In this journey of Advent, uh, as Christians, we come toward Christmas celebrating and recognizing four particular themes. The first was of hope. We recognize with hope, as long as I have hope, I'm able to accomplish so much more because when I lose hope, right, discouragement sets in. But then we also have the theme of love and recognizing that con love can be so conditional with each other and toward each other. You do me wrong, I'll defriend you on Facebook, right? <laughs> but love, the love that comes from God is unconditional. Like the kids were singing in that song, Jesus loves me even when I do wrong. Jesus still loves me, and we're to have that love expressed out through us toward others. Today is the theme of joy. And as we think about joy and all the characters of Christmas, as they were on their journey, God was speaking to them and leading them, much like he leads us today. Although in this story, we see again and again an angel appears. An angel appears and speaks to all the different characters. And one of the first things the angel says again and again, don't be afraid. I don't know about you, but if an angel all of a sudden appeared in front of me, I'd probably be frightened and scared. But I think the don't be afraid is a message for us today, too. Because when you think about joy and the theme of joy and we think about our world today, I don't know about you, but I look online or I scroll through my Facebook or I watch the news and I see anything but joy. I see all kinds of depression things. I see where different countries are trying to usurp power and authority. I see people being, I mean, right? I don't have to go through the whole list, but... In fact, I don't even hardly watch the news anymore. Probably you too. You don't, you don't even want to watch it because there's very few good stories that actually bring you joy. And so we think of the characters of that first Christmas. How did they experience joy? How did they maintain joy in the challenge and the difficulties that they were facing? This journey of joy. And much like you, there's some things we can pick up from that. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. We're not going to read this whole text, but I want you to see in the Scriptures. I want you to see it in the Bible. Open your phone app. A lot of you have version on your phones. Feel free to do that. I want you to see God's Word. Because here at New Life, God's Word is primary. It's our authority. It's what we go to. It's not somebody's idea. It's God's Word from which we speak and act and get all of our direction. Now, this is a story about the shepherds, and we recognize shepherds were kind of despised in that community. They were kind of the outcasts. They were out there. They were, but these were rugged people. I mean, if you've spent any time with people who here in Idaho live in the outback uh, a lot of their times, Monty Webb's here, and he lives a lot out in the back as, a, as working with cattle and, and sheep and stuff. 
now it's he's a flatlander, right? Monty, you're a flatlander right now because he's the because the winter's coming. But those are rugged people, solid people. They have to defend their herds from wild animals. Sometimes they had to even be prepared to defend against thieves. And so what we see here, again, is in verse 9 and 10, an angel of the Lord appears to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. They were terrified, it says. These strong, robust characters. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. And so while they're in fear, while they're experiencing terif- t- being terrified, the angel is saying, Don't be afraid because here's why. I bring you good news for everyone. And that means for us too. And so one of the things I think when we think about joy and that journey of joy is we expect it to Uh, That we're going to be happy all the time. That our conditions is what sets it. Well, Luke 2, verse 11 goes on. It says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then here, as we saw in that video during the offering, suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. This journey of joy. So often, I don't don't know where you are in your journey and your walk and your joy, but maybe you're kind of thinking, you know, I, I need joy when things go right my way. Then I find myself joyful. Joy and, right? I need something in there to maintain my joy. And yet the word of the angel to the shepherds and the word to us today is you can have joy even in the midst of pain. You can have joy even in the midst of pain. I don't know what pain you're experiencing right now in this season when maybe it's hard for you to hear the music and because you're experiencing something so painfully deep. What, what is it that's robbing you of your joy today? What fear are you battling or what fear is it that is in your life right now that just seems to be robbing you? Well, today's message is for you. God's word is for you today that you can have a deeper joy. See, as as a Christian, we walk and follow Christ knowing that our life is not going to be smooth. You see, in the Bible times, a lot of times people seen if things went well for you, that means God is blessing you. But if things go bad for you, you must have done something really wrong. And that's why God is punishing you. Because that, that was a big understanding here. But we're saying, and Christ even says, no, just because you're following me doesn't mean the road's always going to go well. In fact, James says it this way, dear brothers and sisters, watch this. When troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now, why would that be? Wait, troubles come and I'm supposed to be joyful? Okay, now don't be morbid. Don't be weird on that. That's, he's not saying, you know, you, you, I don't know if you've seen this commercial on TV where bags are ripping open and all the groceries and they start laughing and then, you know, the train's packed full and then the last one, the gal's pouring coffee on herself laughing, right? That's not what we're talking about here. But when you go through trials of many kinds, consider it great joy. Why? Because that's when God really is real to you. Right. As I look over this crowd and I see all the the faces here, some of you, I know your stories very well. I know that even in the midst of pain, you express joy, joy beyond your circumstances, because like the angel said, I have come to give you good news for everyone that a savior has been born in the city of David, who is Christ the Lord. That's the joy that we hold on to, not our circumstances and knowing that God will bring us through. Consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I hope you grab a hold of that today. But there's also another part about joy, and it's about being connected. 
and not just being connected with God. Well, that's the primary and the ultimate. It's also important to be connected with other people. Because sometimes I need someone else that's experiencing that joy at an outward level that encourages me in my day or in my walk or as I'm journeying through this thing of life. I need someone to hold my hand when it looks like everything's falling apart. I need a person who will say to me, look, I don't know how we're going to get through this together, but I know God's going to shine through it. His word promises he is faithful. He never changes. He will carry us through. It may not go the way we want, but God, God is still on the throne. Joy and connection. The psalmist says this, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. That is the joy of Advent. Jesus didn't just come once. He's coming back again. And he's coming back in a way where he's going to reign and he's going to right everything that's wrong in our world. He's going to transform this place. That's what God says. A new heaven and a new earth. And everything will be put right. Joy and that connection. Because see, here's the thing about fear. And here's the thing about pain. It oftentimes isolates you. I mean, think about in your own life where you have experienced great pain. What do you do? Do you right away run out to friends? No, not a lot, a lot of times. There'll be a party and you'll be like, you know, I don't go in. Right? There'll be a social event. Oh, I, I don't, just don't feel like going. Right? We tend to isolate ourselves. We've even found it here in church. I've been a pastor a long time, and I'll find that people go through difficulty and trial, and they'll stop going to church. They'll stay at home. We don't have our life perfect like everybody else. Well, that's a lie, right? Because everybody sitting here has their own personal habits and hang-ups and trials and difficulties. None of us are perfect. This isn't a place where you come to church to show off how you got it all together. It's a place where you come to find out how God, God loves you despite that you don't have it all together. And we need a regular reminding of that. That's what happened here in our story as well. We see joy is followed by worship. We want that deep joy. A big part of it is worship. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures, and they presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and myrrh. This is how we live in that balance of pain and joy of life is through worship through our worship we focus our eyes on christ we focus our eyes on him as we live you know i found also as worship can jump start that joy you know if you're finding yourself isolated dig into the word get into some of the psalms read the painful emotions that are there and you're going to find yourself engaged in worship worship of our god it's what Matthew tells us about the wise men as they connected with Christ, as they saw him and witnessed him, they were overjoyed. And God is telling us we can expect and experience that life-giving joy ourselves. You know, as we adventure on toward Christmas only a week away, we think about the brokenness of our fallen world. And here's a couple action steps for you to take as we prepare to believe here today. The brokenness of our fallen world stands at odds with the joy that is found in Christ. One of the first things is take time to really connect with others. I mean, really be present. And I'm going to say it. That means put your phone away. Okay? <laughs> Set your phone down. You know, but you can always be followed up on later. But connect with others. Really take the time to do that. Another thing is take time and make the choice to be purposefully thankful. And you may say, wow, I don't know if I have a lot to be thankful about. There's so many bad things happening in my life right now. Then you need to be reminded of your love for Christ and God's love for you. As the kids were singing and reminding us today, that God loves you despite no matter what you're going through, even if it was at your own hands, even if it was your own choice, even if you chose to go off the path, God is right there. It doesn't matter how many steps away you are from God. It's only one step back, one little cry out to him, one simple line. God, 
hear me. That's it. And he's, he's right there ready, willing, and waiting. Take time to make the choice to be purposefully thankful. And then finally, worship God for who he is and how he's revealed himself in the Bible. So many of us have an understanding of God that's not even real. So it's fun to do some of those Christmas story questionnaires. I don't know if you've seen them. They're online and stuff. You can Google it. But, you know, what was it really, what some of the Christmas stories, was there really a Christmas tree? Was there really animals? Was it, you know, you can start looking around and go, what was the real Christmas story? And we find it right there in Luke 2. It's amazing how many things maybe we don't uh, actually know about the Bible story. The brokenness in our world is met by the joy, the deep understanding joy. So here's a verse to end with today. Out of Psalms. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I trust and hope and pray, people of God, that you will experience the real presence of Christ in your Christmas. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Thank you that you, Holy Spirit, help it to resonate in our lives. And I know, God, that there are some here today that are going through some of the worst things in their life, and yet they're here. And so will you speak to them? Would you minister to their hearts that even in the midst of pain, they may know, may know and experience your joy. And it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen.